After I became a Christian in college, I began spending my summers working at a Christian camp in the mountains of Eastern Pennsylvania. It was a really formative time, and don't get me wrong, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. But after spending 10 weeks or so living in cabins without electricity, in an age without cell phones, I always uh, came back feeling out of touch. My friends had new inside jokes. Some of them started new relationships, and there were experiences that they had throughout the summer that, that I didn't share with them. And it often made me feel like an outsider. Maybe you've had a, a similar experience. Uh, your friends or your family are, are getting together for something, maybe going on a vacation, but you can't go. You've got to work. And something happens that will forever go down in, in family lore. You didn't get to experience it. You just hear the stories. So many people today, young and old, are impacted by the stress of, of this very thing happening to them. We call it the fear of missing out or, or FOMO. In the Gospel of John, we're told that Jesus rose on the first day of the week, which is Sunday morning. As Pastor Rick shared in, in the, the Easter message, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, who went to, and told the disciples. In John chapter 20, verse 19, John says, on the evening of, of the first day of the week, so this is Sunday night of the same day when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for the uh, for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. As we read on, we learn that in verse 19, the statement, when the disciples were together, doesn't mean when all the disciples were together, because Thomas wasn't in the room on Sunday night. We don't know where he was or why he wasn't with them. All we're told is that Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. Talk about missing out. Can you imagine, just stop it and think what it must have been like for Thomas walking into that room. The joy and excitement to have missed it. It's no wonder that Thomas responded as, as he did, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And Thomas isn't just reacting out of jealousy or bitterness for missing the moment. What Thomas has become famous for, doubting Thomas, wasn't unique to him. At the end of Mark's gospel, after Jesus appeared to Mary, she went and told the disciples that she had seen the risen Lord, and yet they did not believe. What gives me such comfort and encouragement is that despite the disciples' failure to believe, Jesus seeks them out. He shows up and he reveals himself to them. And picking up in John 20, verse 26, it says, A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, uh, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, "Peace be with you." And then he said to Thomas, "Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe." That's the passage. That's there's really nothing else going on here. It's as if Jesus has. One thing on his agenda for that meeting, to visit and see Thomas and restore his faith, and in so doing, to restore Thomas to himself. Not because he was angry uh, with Thomas, but out of his love for him. This passage provides us with a, with a wonderful reminder that Jesus is and always shall be our good shepherd and he will always come looking for us, no matter how lost we might get. May you be encouraged this week. And may the Lord of Lords strengthen your faith to do all he's called you and commissioned you to do. Amen.